Okay, awesome. It sounds like everybody um, is seeing the screen and hearing me. Excellent. So um, my name is Shaylin Herrick. I'm the Director of Marketing for Business Products here at SOS, and I am joined by Derek Wood, the Product Manager for SOS Server Save. So today we're going to go through a little bit of background on SOS, who we are, and why we created SOS Server Save. We'll go through some quick screens about the features of SOS Server Save, and then we'll look at a competitive comparison, and then finally Derek will take you through a demo. Um, it'll look like I have a lot of screens here, but we'll blow through them pretty quickly so that we can get straight to the meat of the presentation and see a demo. And while I'm talking, or Derek is talking, please feel free to type questions into the chat box. We love questions, and we are more than happy to answer them for you. OK, great. So moving right along, so a brief introduction into who SOS is, where we've come from, and what we're doing with server safe today and how we believe this is really changing the market, how the market's changing with it. Uh, we started off a rather humble beginnings as any tech startup you know, in, a, in a dorm room, and that was in 2001 in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, we really didn't have our big launch globally into the U and specifically into the U.S. market until about 2005, 2006, which was when we also won our first PC Mag Editor's Choice Award uh, as a beta product. Our product from inception until just this last winter was a file and folder online backup. Uh, the, re the real meat of our target audience were those who really needed a high security backup program that could be available off-site and not some cheap storage solution that was putting it off-site, but you know, the security wasn't there, no geographic redundancy, et cetera. So we've really dominated the market as far as the leading online backup program, both awarded by PC Mag Editor's Choice uh, three times over the last six years. Four. Four times over the last six years. Uh, the last of which was this uh, November, so we're happy about that. And that's and that's a tough review to get because they really put all the software they evaluate through the gauntlet, and we keep coming out on top, being compared directly against companies like. Uh, the consumer giants, Mosey and Carbonite, uh, iDrive, i365, Intronus, uh, you name it, we've been compared against the HP Upline, which is no longer around as of 2008, 2009, uh, Iron Mountain, all of it. So, so we have 500,000 active customers in the consumer and business space, and we have 500 value-added reseller partners, actually more than, I think it's more like 700 today. Um, we have 110 employees around the world, approximately 20 engineers, including our CEO, constantly working on how to make all of our products bigger and better. And we have 11 global network points of presence. Um, so Derek was mentioning geographic redundancy as a key feature that we have. We make all of our backups automatically redundant in two data centers and requests for specific um, data center backup in like the UK or in Canada, um, we can absolutely accommodate. So what is going on? Um, what's going on in the market? What's going on for you guys as businesses? Tape and disk backup um, was always cheap and was for a long time cheaper than cloud backup, cheaper than online backup, and now that's not really the case anymore. Cloud backup has decreased in cost dramatically and increased in reliability. So now what's really the point in doing tape backup? You might, you might want to, but it's um, absolutely recommended. Um, even this week, the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security put out a study stating that they recommend online backup um, in the event of disaster, theft, um, all these things can happen to you. And having online backups of all of your data, including your server data, ready to be recovered and quickly uh, is something that is just a best practice. Now, for the, for the market of online backup, so far we've seen that it's been a huge growth in the consumer market. So individual users have really spurred the growth in this early adoption phase. Early adoption meaning the security was still a little uncertain. Uh, people weren't really sure about it, not familiar with the idea of putting sensitive data out in the cloud. 
but now that that's more comfortable, we're seeing a huge increase in the adoption for uh, SMBs of any size. You know, no longer is it just a solution for those of you who are on the leading edge, but it's now something that should be a standard part of any backup strategy that you have for your business, which is a standard part of any really risk management uh, aspect of your business. You know, Tech, TechCrunch and Forbes just came out and they both commented on the same study that showed that risk management is one of the most underrated items in the SMB market today. And that when times are tough, poor risk management actually puts people out of business more than uh, just the market being down. So most of the, most of the businesses that have, gone out of, that have gone under in the last few years, uh, the study actually showed significantly that it was due to a lack of proper risk management, be, meaning backup solutions. So we're really looking at about a 75% open market getting into a proper backup solution. Now we have a lot of people on the line and we assume that there's going to be some that are going to be uh, full-time internal techs, uh, part-time, maybe some of you are just business owners and you're doing this on your own accord. Could we all just put in your, uh, your role in the business and how, and how you operate and what you're looking for as far as getting an online backup solution in place? Okay, and then as, as those come in, it, it's going to be good. So the, the big reason that a lot of people are starting to migrate now is, one, it's proven as both secure and effective and necessary. And really, it's, it's now also that your tape systems are coming up to expiration. Anyone here look at, uh, looking specifically right now because the, the system you have in place is expiring? And as we have all these coming in, we appreciate all the feedback. This is, this is really great. Uh, so we have some some information systems managers, uh, IT admins, office manager. Okay, great. Thanks. Small business owners. Okay, very cool. Not using tape, using external hard drive. Right. Okay, cool. This is a this is a really cool mix of of all of you here. So we appreciate you attending. Um, let's go ahead and dive into some of the features of Server Save. This is the portal that you will see um, when you start using SOS Server Save. There's online backup and recovery accessible from this portal, the bare metal image creator, which is what you would use to back up system state data, programs, and application data, and this includes your SQL, SharePoint, and Windows servers. Exchange granular recovery, this will do your mailbox restores um, and allow you to search, find, and recover mail messages, contacts, and more, and bare metal image stream. This is what you will use to send your messages, I'm sorry, not your messages, to send your bare metal images up into the cloud. It's um, a specially engineered version of SOS Online Backup that is designed specifically to send very, very large files up into the cloud securely. Next, um, a really cool feature that we added into this dashboard is uh, to allow you to back up by use case. Um, you can choose back up a laptop or a PC, back up a file server, back up an Exchange or SBS server, and back up an application or a database server. And then this is a, it's got it's like a wizard tool that will take you through how to do this backup. This is the SOS Server Save online um, yes online backup and recovery tool. This is our standard recovery tool, as some of you are probably familiar with. So this you would use to do your um, backups for laptops or PCs, file servers, and perform a recovery for any of these pieces of equipment. Um, you can also schedule your backups for these pieces of equipment. And this is one of the pieces of software that won a PC Mag Award, and you get it included in the SS Server Save product. And when we're talking about backup, backup is not something that's new. Uh, really what differentiates any service is the experience and we were specifically noted for making the process quote-unquote both simple and secure so both of those being a, a big item there because security for those of you who are in uh, IT services and development know that security always complicates whatever you're trying to do so for us building the software is, is certainly 
uh, more complex than an FTP tool because we make it secure. But we've been able to keep that high level of security without complicating the usability of the software. So it truly makes it a install it, schedule it, forget it, and then you can use, you know, in a disaster, it's very simple to go back and recover to any specific date. So you can, as the screen below shows, uh, you can refresh your entire backup set as long as you've been backing up. Um, my personal account I've been running since 2008. I can refresh my whole backup set uh, in a matter of a minute to, you know, October 2008, October 2009, and then I can also see what it recent is today. Uh, and in the same, you can use your daily recoveries uh, in the specific version of each file because there's unlimited versioning. And you can simply and securely share information to other people via email. So the really the experience behind our program has been what's generated our success in that it's both simple and secure. Thanks, Derek. So moving on, what else is in the online backup and recovery tool? And it, from the books of the chat here, a lot of you guys are already familiar with this. Um, backup multiple network drives and workstations from one portal. We don't care if you use our system to back up external hard drives. Um, you can back up absolutely whatever you choose to. Uh, sorry, uh, we, we have some questions. So some people here are already SOS users. How many people are already using SOS and are particularly excited about the launch of server state rather than having to use a third party? I know Michael's already one of them. And anyone else, maybe uh, David? Same with Robert. Okay, great. Cool. Well, let's go ahead and move on from this then. This is just a, a quick view of how to choose um, which files and folders you're going to back up. And as uh, Michael's comment comes through, he says, you know, we've been using Backup Assist alongside SOS Online Backup. And that's been, and that's why at ServerSafe has been so successful is no longer are we just providing a file and folder backup and then you have to use some third party to create a full system image. We're now using all of it. Some people are using Acronis for the image part. And those systems are, are great in what they do, but you know, our system is still being used for the online portion because of that simplicity and security. And we've now integrated that type of technology into our, our award-winning cloud platform. So now we're going to have both the image-based backup locally, off-site, exchange granular recovery, uh, and then you know, over the next three, six, and nine months, we're, we're going to be moving into more of a cloud boot scenario, which will be really nice. Today, it's available uh, per purchase, uh, $500 to get it in, and we'll you know, load up an image uh, in, our, in our cloud and then give you the IP to access it. But uh, it'll be a standard part of the service um, moving forward. So we're really excited about where this is taking us. So on the screen here we have a quick view of bare metal image stream and you will get to see this in action um, later on in the presentation. This is the tool that you'll use to um, perform uploads of your bare metal images to the cloud. Um, here's some other views of image stream. As you'll notice, it looks a lot like the online backup and recovery tool. Uh, you can search for backups to recover from by calendar date, just like Derek was talking about, and you can also select um, by folder and by machine to send backups to the cloud um, whenever you like. Yeah, certainly. And one of the big things that we're really changing about image-based backup is the bulkiness of managing a lot of images and the incrementals with the images. With the continuous uh, image backup procedure and the way that our software intelligently recovers long chains of incrementals, you no longer have to schedule a full backup on a regular basis. You really just need one full backup, and then you just run incrementals continuously. That way, getting an updated version to the cloud is more reasonable. You know, backing up a 500 gig image of your of your server may take a long time, and having and you want to avoid doing that as often as you can. With the new incremental or continuous incremental system, you don't have to do that. So it makes restoring back to those uh, certain levels much, much faster and much, much easier. So for you know our office managers in the line, you know switching out those drives every day, trying to keep track of what's there. Okay, now on the weekend we ran a full. Now we need to switch these out and you know make sure we're in order. A lot of that hassle goes away. So think of all the the hassle and the hardware and the mistakes that can be made in that. Most most of the tape based systems 
uh, that was re it was estimated that 60 percent of recoveries uh, for the most part failed and a lot of it wasn't just because the tape systems were breaking I mean that was a big part of it but another, another large part was the human element behind the whole thing people are great at making mistakes and we like to and it's good to automate these things as much as you can Rick says his current image is 2.6 terabytes and we can absolutely accommodate that yeah and that, that is that uncompressed or is that just the raw data or is that just the raw size or is that a compressed size um, uncompressed all right cool okay yeah so, no problem so we'll go through we'll, we'll show how the system works when we go through the demo at the end yeah. here so let's get through the rest of these slides so um, you guys can actually see the system in action um, these are just some shots of exchange backup and granular recovery um, select files to backup and recover select a file and target location for recovery you can do all of this within the EGR tool search multiple backed up mailboxes and messages um, you know, human deletion is a huge, huge part of data loss, and it's, in fact, how most data gets lost, as you guys probably know. Um, so exchange, backup, and granular recovery is a great tool to have on hand to be able to recover data from your exchange server. Um, the exchange, backup, and granular recovery portal allows the user to rapidly search by mail item type. Again, very, very cool way to recover lost data quickly and be a hero within your office. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, this is a look at the SOS server safe dashboard. Um, from this dashboard, you will be able to see how many server licenses um, you have provisioned and how much space you have provisioned across your company. So it'll let you know uh, when you need to purchase more, who's using what, and um, just exactly what's going on in your system. This, I know a lot of people were looking forward to. This is the comparison between SOS ServerSafe, our SOS online backup business product, Zenus, Intronus, and what is now Evolt. Evolt recently changed their name back from I365 um, to Evolt. So we have bare metal backup and recovery. Zenus, Intronus, Evolt, Acronis, all those guys do that. The original SOS online backup business product did not. Exchange backup, granular recovery, Windows Server Backup and Recovery, SharePoint Server Backup and Recovery, all the same story. SQL Server Backup and Recovery, and Recovery, same story. Um, military grade security, we have, have always been a company that has prided itself on its security. Um, we back up all of our backups locally, I'm sorry, we encrypt all of our backups locally, in transit, and at the data center. So everything is safe, no matter where it is. Um, we provide total protection coverage, automatic and infinite archiving of all files and folders. And mobility, um, it, no matter where you are on whatever system you're on, you can always log into m.sosonlinebackup.com and check out what's going on in your account. And we also allow up to 5,000 seats per account. Um, if you need more than that, we can absolutely help you out, but I think that's a, that's a pretty big account. <laughs> And uh, we offer transactionally consistent backups. So this is in opposition to crash consistent backups. And uh, we have a question from Muhammad. When you say SharePoint backup, does that mean that you offer SharePoint hosting? You don't know much about SharePoint, but we are considering implementing it. No, we, we do not do SharePoint hosting. Uh, the image system, it, you can just create an image of any system volume. So you just create a volume of your of the where your SharePoint server res resides, and then you can recover it. Uh, we do have a system that maybe you'd be familiar with if you're still looking at SharePoint integration, uh, and that SOS Collaborate, which uh, we can certainly send some more information out later. Mm -hmm. To go through some of the uh, the items more specifically, the military grade security. That's a 256-bit AES encryption before it leaves the machine. It's, a one, it's transferred then over 128-bit SSL and stored at an additional 1024-bit AES once it's at the first data center. And then we replicate to a geographically separate second data center. For those of you in Canada or the UK or Australia where you need the data to reside solely within that country, uh, the geographic redundancy does not apply, but everything else does. And those data centers are still backed up and there is an offsite backup. It's not, just not as far apart as if you're in the US. 
Peter has a question. Does Windows Server Backup include OS or only the files? OS. So the file and folder program was what we had, and being able to restore, you know, you know if you create, create a boot disk, and then you'll have a full image of your system. So the and then the total coverage, the automatic and infinite archiving, that's a that's a huge, huge benefit, especially to those of you who are either working or serving in uh, legal firms or accounting firms, as much of their security compliance revolves around uh, data retention. We literally do not delete any data at any certain point in time, except if the account is canceled, and at which point we queue up complete purge of the data from that account after 60 days. And then also, if you delete information from the backup client itself. Uh, mobility. Oh, and the, I'm sorry, and the, the versioning is completely free, so you can have as many versions of a file as you want. So if you're backing up every hour, and if you're getting your PST file, for example, at the end of the year, you're going to have, you know, a, a thousand versions of your PST file, but it's only going to count the largest size of that version, or the largest version of that file against your backup space. So if it's a, at the end of the year, if it's a three gig PST, it only takes three gigs off of your backup account. With mobility, we do have the mobile client, and we also have the SOS iPhone app that's out. Uh, currently, we're working on updating the backup agent to handle the larger images that the new 4S camera can take, but it will back up contacts and images from previous versions of the iPhone, and it's great for uh, on-the-go on the restore and access to information. And we will have the Android app very soon within the next couple of weeks. Um, that will back up the entire SD card, contact photos, videos, everything, and allow you to restore that data um, if anything ever happens to your phone. Definitely, it's going to be. We're very excited to see how that's going to go. So what this means is that with the servers, what's coming into SOS, you have a good file and folder solution that you can use at workstations and desktops to keep that, you know, the laptop fleet and the individual users under control. Then you're going to have the server safe software to handle your servers naturally, and then the mobile clients to handle mobile applications backup and access. So like, especially when you pair up the, an individual backup account per user in your environment, and you know, user to user, some people use it, some people you know, are just tr struggling to use their email. But those, of you who, those, those employees who are comfortable with technology are going to love the increased access they'll have to their backups and the ability to really speed along their, their working day because of it. Rick has a question. Is use space based on compressed size or source size of data? Source size of data. So there, there it's always been a, an interesting uh, debate with cloud-based services to go on compressed data or source data. Uh, but the pricing is just adjusted because at the end of the day, the cost for the hosting is going to be the same no matter what we're charging you for it. So the cost is adjusted. Um, Linda had a question earlier. How do I know if backup is successful and how do I find out the backup schedule and details on what systems are backed up? Because you have multiple servers. Certainly, we can, we can take a look at the My Account system, which gives a full backup history. So you can see the machine name and the date that the backup ran and, and the amount of data that was backed up at that runtime. So we'll show you that at just multiple systems. So we can, we can take a look at the My Account system, which gives a full backup history. So you can see the machine name and the date that the backup ran and, and the amount of data that was backed up at that runtime. So we'll show you that at just multiple systems. And then we're going to be releasing to our direct clients uh, what we're calling our, our Pulse Management System. So in the next uh, couple months, uh, we're going to have a Pulse System where it would, it would actually go along with the install at each location and would give you the ability to also push out schedules for backups if you have multiple locations. One other really important point that I failed to put on this slide, but I want to make sure you guys know, is that we do not require a hardware purchase. Many of our competitors do. And you are absolutely free to use SOS Server Save on any machine or any box that you currently have running within your system. So let me open up just a quick, uh, let's bring up our website real quickly and we can show you where you can have some additional resources after, after this webinar or later in the week as you're evaluating more. 
So if we go to our support section, and this is addressing Patrick's question and some other questions we have about, you know, where where we install this information. If we go to our knowledge base and then go to our server save section. And do I need a staging server to use SOS server state, which is what uh, Shailen was just talking about? A lot of competitors require that you buy a piece of their hardware um, to even talk about what a backup service you want to go through. So the reason for that is that most of these companies have come from hardware-based solutions, and so they're very much uh, you know, dependent upon the hardware sales and uh, that part of their business to sustain. Well, we've always just been a software company, so we really don't care. Uh, what you would do here is this list shows you basically in the different uh, swim lanes we have of where you would install each agent that you have available for you in your business. So on the server side of things, your web server, file server, mail server, database server, whatever it is, you install image creator at each one of these locations and then you would create a backup job specific to that machine and appropriate for that machine to some staging machine. Now again, this is where that proprietary hardware usually comes into play. I know that you know Dato and uh, Zenith, it's you know two thousand dollars out the door, and that's a, actually a wholesale price. With us, you can just get any black box, you know, just an extra desktop, load it up with some RAM and enough hard drive space to account for all the data that you're going to be creating with the with the image based backups, and then you would install what what we're calling Image Stream. Image Stream is built specifically with the ability to back up large files, so large system images and large file sets. So when you have a file server that has you know, a million files on it, uh, the, our main file and folder system uh, wasn't designed for that. It was designed for uh, more humble servers. So now ImageStream is specifically designed to handle a proper server environment. So you install ImageStream and go offsite from there, and that's to help with resources. The encryption locally does take up uh, some system resources, especially on the first backup. So you want to make sure you're not doing this on a production machine. Then you have the online file and folder backup or image stream itself. It can be installed on a, a, a directly on a workstation or a laptop as well. So yes, you would install the online file and folder program directly on these workstations or laptops and then schedule backups directly from those off-site. And then we have our mobile applications where these can be downloaded from the iTunes application store or the Droid Marketplace once it's released. And you can use it to back up your contacts, back up photos, and restore or share files uh, straight from your mobile device. So that it helps tremendously because there are services like we talked about, uh, SOS Collaborate, uh, similar to Box.net or Dropbox, uh, good for active data. But sometimes there's data that wouldn't be in your active data backup set that you would be that would be helpful here. For instance, I back up. Uh, everything on my hard drive currently and the map drives I work on plus my external drives from years and years of computer use. Uh, I wouldn't have all that data available on my SOS Collaborate account. So sometimes it's really helpful to have that backup access mobily and I can search through for a specific file and recover it right away. All right, so let's we'll open up, I'm going to open up a remote session and we can to our server that we're running, and we can go through a quick demo. Any questions while we get this set up? We had a lot coming through. Rick has a good question. How powerful does the staging machine have to be? Uh, you know, it really depends on the load you're putting on it. But I would recommend, you know, 8 to 16 gigs of hardware. You want it to be as fast as, you, as possible, right? I mean, it's just dedicated to doing backup. So I would say 8 to 16 gigs of RAM, you know, loaded up with a terabyte drive or, or more, depending on the service you're putting to it. So uh, you, it's just really important to understand, you know, what you're trying to do. Patrick Lewis has a question, does the backup run continuously or does it need to be scheduled? It needs to be scheduled. 
I, there, there really is no, at least I have found no true continuous backup program that doesn't mess with productivity on whatever machine you're running on. Uh, minimum bandwidth recommended as well. Uh, you want to get at least, when you're transferring, you want to have at least, you know, six, seven hundred megabits per second. Uh, most people have much faster lines than that, T1 lines. The availability of uh, fiber optics right up to your doorstep these days with Verizon Fios and I believe AT&T U-verse. So it's like, for instance, my, uh, at my home here in uh, Manhattan Beach, you know, I have Verizon Fios and I get, you know, 25 down and 15 up at my home. So um, it's recommended to get as fast as you can. It's just important to be aware that it, uh, you're certainly your bandwidth is a function of the speed of backup and recovery. Okay. What type of OS does the staging machine need to run on? All of our software needs to be running on a Windows platform. So I would say Windows 7, 8 to 16 gigs of RAM, and enough hard drive space to handle all the data you're sending that way. Linda says, currently we have SOS online backup. Is SOS server save an upgrade? Not sure you mentioned this. Absolutely. So you would need to, uh, you, you can continue using your same backup account. You would just need to talk to one of our specialists, and they'll be able to you know, get you a deal, and you know, we'll assign a server license to your account. Rick asks, do you have plans to go to the Apple platform? Yes, we actually have a Mac application available from our, on our download page, and you can try it out. Uh, it's first generation, and we had a lot of good feedback from our, from our, uh, our light release this last fall, and we're expecting a new release out in the next, uh, next month, so the next three or four weeks, and uh, we hope that it's going to be successful. Okay, so they got a bunch more questions, but I want to table that and just get through a quick demo. Okay, so we have, this is what Server Save looks like, except it wouldn't have the Acme brand. This is a, a faux partner of ours. We do have a, a very strong partner program, for those of you who are interested in that. Um, but you have five different agents here. So that goes back to the article that we looked at before with the diagram of where you install each one. So the online backup and recovery is what our file and folder system is. It's what most of you are already using if you're already an SOS customer. So you would install that on workstations and laptops and run it from there. Then you have the bare metal image creator, which is a new part of the program. This is really one of the key components of server save. This allows you to create and recover image files. Exchange granular recovery. One big thing we wanted to do is we didn't want to be like everyone else and have, you know, oh, well, this module costs you this much. Oh, you want to actually recover exchange? Well, then you have to buy this module and it costs you this much, et cetera, et cetera. So our service save licenses just include exchange granular recover, recovery, image-based backup and recovery, and, and the bare metal image stream to get it off site. There's no separate module, it's just you get that server license and you can do all this. So bare metal image creator, let's go ahead and create a backup job. Um, first you get these tabs, and you generally don't go through these tabs that often. So if I go to disk map, you have the Windows volume manager, but this is generally taken care of for you in the backup wizard. Backup job, I'm going to create, the, I'm going to delete this so that the scheduling is more open to show. Uh, different destinations. Again, this is done through the wizard when you're recovering or uh, creating a backup job. And then just the backup history tab, which is great if you have any type of other monitoring service that you have in place. A lot of people use uh, the freeware Spiceworks. Uh, that's, a, that's a great you know, mon network and system monitoring tool. And you could, have, you could make Spiceworks monitor something like this, no problem. So if we go to the wizard and we hit backup, this really just makes it super simple, okay? So you, you select the volume you want to back up. This has multiple volumes, so maybe I would want to select both the E drive, which is Exchange, and the C drive. 
for this demo, I'm just going to do this, the E drive. The system reserved volume is something that's created upon recovery of a drive. It's not something that you would actually back up. So we would never select system reserve, but let's just select the exchange drive for now. We hit next. And actually, it looks like I need to clear out my F drive here. Let me just delete these. Okay, great. So here we would select the network location for the backup. This is for the local backup. This is image creator. So we would either define a network location, so that staging machine, which would be very common, you just put the destination name or path here, and that's fine. Uh, or you can hit browse and go to an external drive, a map network drive, something of that nature. For this, I'm just going to put it to virtual drive path. Hit next. Then we have the scheduling. So again, with the traditional systems that are, that are in place in most SMBs, most, like about 75% of SMBs out in the market today do some sort of hardware-based image backup that requires a lot of switching in and out of drives. So one of the reasons that you have a weekly full backup and then weekly increment and then incremental throughout the week strategy was because of the old school way of having to recover this information. You used to have to manually go through and recover through the entire chain up to the point that you want to get to. So if we're running, let's say we have a crash on Friday and you want to restore back to the last backup, which is from Thursday night, the last incremental. You would first have to get your full image from Sunday, recover it. Then you'd have to recover the incremental from Monday, recover the incremental from Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and I hope that all of these were successful. Well, now, and that, and that really means that you're limited to the, the speed or the, the frequency of backups because it would make the recovery process too long, your restore point objective or restore time objective too long if you had too many incrementals. But now we don't need to do that, so we can run it back an incremental every 60 minutes. But for that reason, you no longer need to do a full backup more than once. You just do a full backup maybe once a month, once a year. And then you just do incrementals moving forward. So we would just say, okay, every Sunday at, or this Sunday at 6 p.m., we're going to run incrementals. So and then Sunday through Monday ever going, we're going, to, or we're going to run incrementals every hour. And then you would just back up these incrementals off-site every hour, and it would be, I'm, I'm sorry, back up these incrementals to the staging machine every hour, and then you go off-site with them that night. So that way you have a really easy way of getting back that information. It will show how simple the recovery process is. So this, this helps you avoid you know, really managing all that information. Then we have compression methods, so standard, high, standard compression, average compression rates about 50% from you know, just the raw size of your, of your drives. Uh, so we recommend just stick with that. Uh, the high compression is 60 to 80%, takes a little longer, but um, you know, we just recommend the standard. You can also encrypt the data locally if you need to. We don't recommend it if you, if you are comfortable or can avoid it as we're already going to encrypt the data before we transfer. So the encryption, encrypting encrypted files can take a little, a little longer. So you can do this, of course, but you may see a little, uh, a little longer process time to get the files encrypted locally. And again, that's a 256-bit AES encryption that we are applying locally before we go off-site. You have different commands you can put in, so pre-snapshot, post-snapshot, post-backup. So for anything that you want, for any reason, if you wanted to be, um, you know, paused or restarted or refreshed or anything like that, you can put some batch files in here for those of, for you, those of you uh, who are IT administrators and, and would be doing something like that. So that's really nice. The, Couple questions here. Are you familiar with Moji Pro? If so, what are some of the key differences? 
Uh, Patrick, we're not even playing in the same sandbox anymore with Mozy Pro. They, they're just not offering what we're offering now. Uh, we've always been a more secure and higher rated backup, online backup service. And with the addition of ServerSafe, we're just we're not even really competing anymore, which is why they weren't on that sheet. But I have another sheet that I can pull up at the end that we can go through more specifically. Uh, Bruce asked, can a, an existing backup server be used as the transfer machine while continuing to be on to be the on-site backup? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The whole goal of the staging machine is just to not be running backups of large images from the production servers. Uh, Richard asked, are there any file types that cannot be compressed? Uh, I'm, I'm sure there are. It, it, that's kind of a kind of a hard question to ask. It's a general question. So you'll, you'll see things like uh, a, a, a photograph uh, wouldn't compress too much, but you know, your, your system volume will compress a lot. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's kind of just a case-by-case -case basis. You'll, you'll see when it does or does not compress. A zip file, for example, would not compress. Okay, so you can do the password, we don't recommend it. You could also split the image up into multiple pieces for whatever reason if you wanted to do that. Um, wouldn't see, you would probably only want to do this if your incrementals were getting fairly large. So if your uh, incrementals are generally no big, no bigger than two gigs. Uh, but if they start getting pretty big or even at two gigs, you know, the local process before going off site does depend on file size. So it's a nonlinear algorithm. So the, the time to process a 5 gig file versus a 10 gig file is not 2x. It's an exponential growth. So it may be something like 4.7x. And then from 10 to 20 would be maybe 17.9x. Uh, you know, it, it, there's not a, a linear relationship uh, with that. So if your incrementals be, are rather large, then it may help to split this into you know one gig chunks or two gig chunks, so that the process will be a, will be a little faster. But that's typically not not used. So oh, we have our summary of the backup we created, and I hit finish, and that's going to give me a summary here. So I could you know come in, take a look at what's going on. Uh, I can edit this backup job if I like. And that's we're just back here. Uh, it's scheduled to kick off in uh, about 12 minutes. But we do have some backups that have incrementals that I can show the restore capability already. So restore here, this is more restoring a, uh, this is restoring to overwrite an entire volume. Uh, so I'm not going to show this because it's rather limited, whereas Explore Backup is a lot more flexible in that you can restore an image to a virtual drive, which is uh, quite common as when you typically restore from an I image, it's rare that you would just want to boot the whole thing uh, or overwrite an entire drive. Usually it's great to have a machine that's up and running and then you restore that image to that machine and then you can take advantage of some of the data that's within that. But we'll see here. A couple questions. Are there any, or this interface you are showing us is through Windows Server. Yes, right now I'm remoted into a server 2008 box running R2. And this is the image creator wizard that we're in. So it's asking me, okay, well, what backup do you want to recover from? So I would go to wherever my staging machine is or wherever my backup destination is. So I go to backup F. So that backup is probably going to fail in 12 minutes because there's no free space on it. But if I select one of these backups, so backup job 15, incremental 4, I say, okay, let's go ahead and go with this one, hit next. Then I take a look and say, hey, we, we recognize that you have a whole lot of incrementals for this backup job, backup job 15. Which incremental do you want to get to? I'll select 8, and I'll say, okay, no problem. Assign the drive letter to this recovery. So just create virtual drive S and put all this information on that virtual drive. So, you know, that's right there. And it, it is what it is. Just really simple. You don't have to create the volume first and then go ahead and recover to it. It just does it for you here, which is really nice. Uh, mount the backup as read-only. You'd only be doing that if you're just recovering this as a backup. Uh, 
But if you're going to be using this as a live production environment, like recovery, then you would you know, uncheck that and not do read only, naturally. So up next, and then it gives you the file chain that it's going to intelligently do for you. So again, you, you don't have to recover in this method. The system's going to do it for you. you hit finish. And so we go ahead and require, uh, refresh. Mohammed asks, same functionality in SBS 2011. Well, sure. I mean, SBS 2011 is new, so of course we're getting, uh, we're working to get uh, official support for SBS 2011. Uh, right now, it's it's not officially supported, but we have seen it work uh, without much issue. So, uh, once we get through the lot of testing, we'll be able to send out an official support for the 2011 environment. So here we we show that okay, we we recovered to. Virtual drive S, and this is exchange volume. So great, that was it. That's all we had to do. Uh, and also, you don't even need to open this wizard. Let's say to recover. Let's say if I just open up this file and I go to my backup drive F, and I have one of these images, I could just right click and quick mount, and it'll just pick the next available drive letter and just quick mount this volume. So it's uh, really quite fast. Okay, so let's say like. Now we created the backup job. Now we want to use image stream to go off site with it. So we'll say okay, let's go ahead and do that. So we we're in our wizard now, so we say let's set up our online backup. And just as simple as our file and folder software. So we got the F drive here. You know, let's say maybe you know some of our other drives are the file and folder parts of our system. You can select those too, no problem. Uh, you can just select what you want to back up. And then we would just select this whole F drive to back up. Now the, the first backup will take some time because it's that, that full image, that first full image. And that's going to take a good amount of time. Uh, when you're running, how much time does this take? Great question. Uh, if you're running a T1, and you have you know 1.5 megabits per second up and down, then we see roughly about an hour per gig of data, and that's of course uh, a ton of variables in line. But on average, we see about an hour uh, per gig. Now, when you're running your backups, it'll be pretty simple to see how quickly you're running. You're running. So if you schedule this to kick off at 6 p.m. and you get an email notification that your 10 gig backup set finished at 6 a.m., you know that you it took you, you know, 1.2 hours per gig of data to run a backup. You know, so that's so that's how you can look look at that side of things. And you'll see pretty simple to see how quickly you're running you're running. So if you schedule this to kick off at 6 p.m. and you get an email notification that your 10 gig backup set finished at 6 a.m., you know that you it took you, you know, 1.2 hours per gig of data to run a backup. You know, so that's so that's how you can look look at that side of things. And you'll you'll just have to see. So uh, you can always estimate and estimate and plan around using you know a one megabit per second transfer speed as an hour per gig backup. Uh, and also, if you go to our website, let me pull this up again. Go back to our main site, and down here we have why choose SOS, and it says super fast backup. So super fast backup. We did a direct comparison. We uh, hired an outside source to do a test for us, and then a 20.2 gigabyte backup set for all three services running on the same machine with the same bandwidth. And we really blew them out of the water. So we did it in 23 hours. Mosey did it in 33, and Carbonite did it partially in 56. So that's uh, really a, a, a terrific example of what's going on. And really, this only speaks to an environment that only has a you know 1.5 megabit per, per second upload, because that's about the cap that you get with Mosey. But let's say that you're running from your home machine or you know, and you have Verizon files like I do, and you're getting 15 megabits per second upload. Uh, you know, I run backups from, from my home close to 
11 or 12 megabits per second. And you see the speed of the backup is uh, it accelerates over time. So when it sees that there's more data to transfer, it'll take advantage of the bandwidth accordingly. So it won't start off as backing up at that 12 megabits per second right away, but quickly into the backup, it'll see, okay, hey, this is a, you know, we have 50 gigs of data selected to back up that needs to go. Uh, this is the first backup, so over time it'll, it'll ramp up its speed. Uh, even here in our office, uh, we have a 100 megabit pipe, which uh, is throttled down to our users to 50 megs, and, and we'll, we'll see backups running, you know, around 40 megabits per second. So the only, the only slowdown is really the SSL, and it depends on your ISP. Your ISP may throttle you down if they see that uh, a lot of bandwidth usage. So maybe it's good to contact them as well to see what's going on. I have a question, can we send you our data on a hard drive rather than do the first backup online? Uh, certainly, we do have a service for that. Uh, but you could also do it yourself. You don't have to go through us. And it's because of the way the security is for the system is that we don't act, we don't physically run into the data center and plug in data or, or pull out data for that matter. So if you look in our knowledge base for PMU, which is physical media upload, and hit this, it'll give you a rundown of what this means. Basically, what it's going to do is we're going to ask you to create an image of the backup set that you'd like to be put off site. You then send us that image on a drive, we'll, we'll mount it, and then we'll just use the backup software um, from a fast, with a faster, with a dedicated machine and a faster pipe to get it off-site for you. We'll then need to send you back the cache and some of the configuration files, and then you'll overwrite those in your local machine, run a backup, and then it'll confirm, and then, that, and then there you go. But really, there's no, there's no need to go through us if you don't want to, especially if you're quite far away. Um, it may be faster just to look to a local hosting provider, a local data center, and see about renting a server for the weekend and doing it yourself. So for those of you who are so inclined uh, and would know how to do something like that, of course, and we have the instructions here. And we actually wouldn't even need to use uh, you can use VMware Converter as well, but really we just need to get an image because the system is based off of the machine name, uh, and then that's how we determine file path. So we just rec recover your machine and run it as if it was it was the machine. Okay, so we have the file selected to backup online. Then we get our schedule. You can back up at the end of the wizard. You can back up automatically without user intervention which means on a schedule. So typically we do something like, like a daily backup. Uh, it depends how big your incrementals are. And then backup, even when this user is not logged on. So this is for server environments. So you would have to put in your Windows domain login information here. And then that'll run, and then that'll run as a Windows service. Oh. Sorry, I'm going to type out here. Uh, good question. Do you back up open files? Yes. And it's actually the, our backup is a transactionally consistent backup when you're doing the image, which is very important to understand. Everyone, uh, the transactionally consistent backup, I'll just go through it real quickly. Uh, for example, if there's a transactionally consistent backup, and a crash consistent backup. A transactional, transactionally consistent backup it means we're going to negotiate with all the transactions that are going on in the databases that are running, so SQL, Exchange, etc. And we're going to say, hey, calm down, um, pause yourself once you finish the last transaction and don't start a new one until I can take a snapshot. They'll take a snapshot and then they will continue. And that happens in a matter of, you know, seconds. Uh, crash consistent backup is what you find in um, like Mosey Pro service, where they just snapshot right away. They don't negotiate with the databases that are running, and it puts you at risk. For example, let's say uh, Peter is going to buy a MIG fighter jet from Jeff. Okay, so the transaction for Peter to buy 
the MIG from Jeff is to take a million dollars out of Peter's account and put a million dollars into Jeff's account. The crash consistent backup could happen right in the middle of that transaction because there are seconds in between that, you know, milliseconds, and the, and the snapshot takes milliseconds to take. So you can take that snapshot right in the middle of that. So the, the money's out of Peter's account, but it's not in Jeff's account. And the transactions aren't kept except for in pairs. So it, it's essentially lost. That's lost information. That's bad for business. So you really want to make sure that if you're running uh, image-based backups, that they are transactionally consistent. That's why manufacturers always say it's recommended to shut down the database and then run a backup. Because shutting down the database means if you take a snapshot of it, all the transactions are going to be completed. Uh, that's the only true way to truly do that. But a transactionally consistent backup, what it does is it pauses the transactions for a split second so that we can snapshot it and then it can continue. So you don't have to shut down the database anymore. You can just make sure that you have a transactionally consistent backup. Huge, huge point to make. You want to make sure that you are not running crash consistent backup programs while your databases are open or you'll lose information. So we got this. We're going to do it daily at 3 p.m. We can tell, send us email reports. Hit finish. And that's it. Now it's scheduled. And you can use, you know, again, same thing, your monitoring reports to show uh, this full backup. So failed because the, the drive is full. Um, you can monitor the scheduled backup with, you know, your, co your company like Spiceworks or anything else like that. It just, that's how it runs, so it's really easy to take, uh, to take a look at. If we go to Online Restore, we can see this calendar view here. So this calendar view will let us go to any bold date, and it will refresh our backup set to that bold date. Uh, or you could just select the most recent, hit next, and then it'll show you everything here. And then you can run it that you can run it this way. So we can we can come here, we get the F drive, and then we have all these volumes. Uh, I actually prefer when I'm doing a recovery to open up the classic view because it's bigger and I can expand it and it shows me more information. So I set up the backup jobs through the wizard, but I typically recover through the classic view. That's just my preference. So I have the F drive here. I have all the date modified. It gave me a list of different versions if there were different versions of the incremental, but you know, by definition it's not going to. And then you just select either the entire machine name, the entire drive, or just a specific incremental file or a specific image file that you want to recover. And then you do that. Same if we go to the My Account system. If we go to our main website, and then go to the web login button here, and if we log in, let's do it with tech training. Oops, sorry about that. Sloppy with passwords today. I have a good comment here. Patrick says, mobile laptops, mobile laptop users will have problems with scheduled backups since their laptops might be off when it's time to run a backup. Is there a solution for that? Sure. Tell it to run every hour. A workstation, like a, a laptop or a desktop backup schedule and backup job happens so quickly on subsequent backups that you can run it every hour with no effect on the productivity of your customer. What you're doing is you're increasing your restore point objective to within an hour. So it's really quite beneficial to do that. So that was a server environment. That's more control. Well, you can schedule every hour uh, with your laptop users, and it, it's really quite nice. If the internet connection isn't available, it'll wait till the internet connection is there. Uh, if their machine is off, then it'll run when the next scheduled backup is scheduled, which is within the next hour. So it, it's it's really quite nice that you could do that. So. Uh, that's the beauty of our system when it comes to a laptop fleet selection. You know, one of our one of our customers currently, uh, they came on board with us uh, 
two years ago now, and they have over 800 users across the North American continent. Uh, this is around six different main headquartered buildings, so like New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, and Toronto, and they have just as many networks, basically a huge laptop fleet. And after evaluating, you know, 12 different services, they found that ours was the simplest to get installed and working across the board. So here we have the My Account system. The My Account system is good for web-based recovery or sharing of a specific backup file. Now, you wouldn't do this if you had to recover something larger than 500 megabytes. For instance, your images. You have to recover an image through the software client. But this is good for backup history. So if I go to backup history reports here, I can select the date range and say, okay, tell me what my backup history is. You know, what has this thing been run? And it's going to first set, set, uh, sort by date, and then it's going to sort by machine name. So Muhammad asks, in the case where it is every hour, it only it's only an incremental backup, so it doesn't take as long as the initial backup. Is that what you're saying? Yes, uh, but technically what we're doing is much better than an incremental backup. Incremental backup has the assumption that it's a file level incremental backup, meaning this file has changed, therefore don't backup, or therefore backup this file again. This file has not changed, therefore leave it alone. So yes, that's very quick rather than rebacking up every file no matter what. Rather archaic to do it that way. Our system is much more intelligent where it actually goes into the backup set, or it actually goes into the file and at a block level decides, okay, what about this file has changed? So let's say you're backing up your Outlook PST file. Uh, PST files can be a couple gigs in size. That means it can take a couple hours to get that backup done. Systems like Mosey and Carbonite run a file level incremental backup, and it could take you know a few hours every time you backup that file. So running a backup set every hour with a PST in your backup set doesn't make any sense. It won't work. With our system, we go into the PST file and we say, okay, at what block level has things have things changed? Instead of having the backup over a couple of hours, this few gig file, we'll separate it into oh I'm out. We'll separate it into a a uh, delta file wherein we can see just maybe a 20 meg change for the day or 50 meg change for the day. And of course, the more you run the backups, the smaller the delta will be. So the change between uh, PST over an hour is a lot smaller than over eight hours. So here's a, a report that you see in the My Account system. So we see by machine name, the use space per machine name, and then the date of the last backup per machine. So if you have multiple accounts run or multiple backups uh, running with the same account, you can monitor all that. And you see here I have you know our Mac Mini that we were doing some testing on uh, that backed up some data as well. And then backup history, which is the one I was trying to get earlier. We'll run this again. And every time you run these reports, it it's actually retrieving from the live server. So it could take a few minutes because it's getting the absolute most recent information possible. Rather than getting, uh, say, reporting from a system that updates, you know, maybe only weekly or daily. So this system is going and it's recovering that uh, immediately. A big part of our service, as far as people comparing against Mosey and Carbonite and others, one of the biggest changes, or one of the biggest differences uh, with our service versus others is really our policy on what we're providing to customers and how, we, and how we price out the service. We don't price based on an assumed or, an, or a planned usage of the data. We sell you a plan with the expectation that you'll use it to its full potential, rather than selling you an unlimited plan assuming that you're only going to use 20 gigs, 40 gigs, 50 gigs, and then putting limitations in place that guarantee that that usage is, is there. So that's what you see a lot of times is you see like why Carbonite on our speed test on our website, if we go back to that, if we go back to this speed test, see that Carbonite, 
and the details. Uh, Carbonite was limited. It seemed to be limited per day of how much data it could back up per day. So that's why it took so long is because it came to a point where uh, it, it seemed just to stop backing up periodically, like after a certain point, and it would start up the next day. So that's why the, the time here was really slow. Also, they throttled bandwidth. Uh, it actually didn't even show the transfer rate with Carbonite. With Mosey, uh, it, was, it seemed to be capped at you know, 2 megabits per second. So if we had a faster, a faster line to test with, we'd probably see SOS even more out in the lead as far as you know, we don't throttle you down. So we don't limit you and what you, where you can back up data. A lot of services limit where you can back up as far as can you back up an external drive. And they say, no, well, we're licensing this machine to run a backup. We're just creating a backup account for your business to use. And if you need to back up from a machine that you have only used once or use every day, it makes no difference to us. We're providing a service with the expectation that you're going to be able to back up information that's important to you and your business and, else, and be able to recover that information. Uh, just as easily. So the experience with SOS is we really wanted to give a 360 degree service as far as a 360 degree coverage. You know, what type of exposure to data loss do you have in your business? Do you have a backup strategy for your workstations and desktops? Is it at a file and folder level? Is it online? Uh, is it just is it an image? Do you have, what do you have for your servers? Is it on-site? Is it off-site? Uh, is it file and folder ready? Uh, do you have exchange granular recovery available? Uh, can you recover from a full image? Uh, you know, do you have mobile access? What kind of access do you have to recover this information? Sometimes you can save you and your organization time and increase productivity by giving each individual user their own backup account to run. You can run multiple backup accounts in the same machine. For instance, maybe your user's a backup account runs uh, you know, every every day at you know eight a.m. and then your backup runs every day every night at eight p.m. You know, then then you can have one account that's backing up information that would that the company would have complete access to, and then you would have an individual user account where they only have access to their data. So it makes it very nice in that they could have that product productive use. Uh, there's another question, can I use a machine like a Drobo as the staging machine? Well, really the staging machine is, is a, we need a machine. You know, the, the idea is that we're saving system resources by, by moving to this type of a solution. Let me pull up a different comparison. Yeah, call in our people at 877-896-3611, and they'll answer all your questions, get you set up, and ready to go. So if I go through here, so here's a, comp a competitive grid against Carbonite and Mosey. So you see the top part has to do just with the file and folder backup program that we've always competed against are competed with them against. But with the addition of SOS server save, we're really just not playing in the same ballpark anymore. Mosey has a little features in, the, in their pro package, but it, it simply is not a competitor, which is why we only showed uh, this, this section today. Because really, we're now competing with Zenith and Turnus and I365, and even they don't offer the file and folder cloud system. So if we were to put these, in, uh, these companies in, in this realm, you would see the top half of theirs be rather empty, and the bottom half be where we're competing. And you could still get you know, a cheaper service from us because we don't require that hardware purchase. It's very expensive. It's very simple to use and set up, very flexible. We don't have additional modules just to recover the information you backed up, like exchange granular recovery or, uh, or exchange backup and recovery is usually a separate module altogether. We don't have that. It's just included as part of it. So for those of you interested, uh, you know, again, 877-896-3611. And you can go to our, our main website, get more information, get set up with, a, um, with an account, a demo. For those of you who are already SOS customers, 
you know, it's really simple. You just continue running backups as you have them, and then once you get a license for Server Save, you could you download Server Save, you sign in, and then you would install Image Creator and uh, start running Server Save backups from your uh, to your local machines. And you use the same backup account to get it off site. Any questions? Uh, Peter asks, will you use Image Creator to build images of whole drives, or can you create an image of files and folders? No, you, you can. If you just want files and folders, then just select those with ImageStream to go off-site. Uh, when you're creating an image with Image Creator, you just select an entire volume at a time. And the number is 877-896-3611. I believe extension one, I'll type that in the chat. And call in to be able to get you set up. So I believe that pretty much sums it up for us today. So uh, thank you all for your time. Uh, for information about uh, pricing and upgrades, uh, call in to our, our server safe specialist and they'll be able to give you the breakdown of how it's going to affect you, whether you're coming in with a backup account already or if you need to uh, create a backup account and you, this is completely new to you. So they'll be able to set you up. And also, for some of you who are IT administrators, uh, you may want to talk to our partner specialists if you have multiple customers that you would be putting this to as uh, we, we have great partner programs available as well. So thank you for your time today. Again, my name is Derek Wood. I'm the Partner Product Manager here at SOS, and we look forward to having you on board. Thanks, and have a good one.